Burial. Untrue! Classic review, Burial Untrue, let's go! This is the second full-length album from William Emmanuel Bevan, aka Burial. An electronic music producer based in the UK who dropped this album back in 2007 through Hyperdub Records, helping ignite a quiet revolution in the dance scene there that would become an international sensation. The influential lineage of Burial's music goes back to the days of Garage House in New York City decades and decades ago, where a smoother strain of the house music coming from Chicago at the time began to take hold. This somewhat different blend of house music coming from NYC at the time was marked by more disco rhythms, luxurious pianos and synthesizers, as well as lead vocals that were more inspired by soul music and even gospel. Notable singles include early 80s pioneers like The Peach Boys with the song Don't Make Me Wait, a track that had a bit more of an electro influence too, as well as more experimental cuts like Arthur Russell's Let's Go Swimming. Then we have some of the prime hit makers of the late 80s and early 90s, tracks that charted both in the UK and the US at the time, like a diva's house flip of the soul smash R-E-S-P-E-C-T, or Chicago Chicago Outfit, Ten Cities, That's the Way Love Is. Also, the uh, Crystal Waters song, Gypsy Woman. La -da -dee, la -da -da, la -da -dee, la -da -da. Over in the UK, they started to develop their own strains of the stuff in the 90s and 2000s, resulting in some really weird and wild variations fused with elements of other electronic genres, R&B, even hip hop, artists like Roy Davis Jr. and The Streets and Zed Bias and MJ Cole. This new umbrella of UK Garage encompassed a lot of different sounds and styles. One of the most surprising of which is Two Step, which featured these kind of shuffling, boxy rhythms that gave the sound a really interesting vibe. All of this artistic evolution then falls at the feet of Burial in the 2000s, but his ideas and intentions are far different than that of any UK garage producer up until that point. William came through with a pretty distinct sound right away, swapping out garages, typically jaunty and jumpy pianos for ambient oceans of synth, swapping out live singers and guest singers for vocal samples from other popular tracks like Usher's How Do I Say, or Ciara's Promise, or Beyonce's cover of Victoria Beckham's Resentment, just to name a few samples on this very large record. And the vocal snippets on this thing are usually pretty short, pretty tight, treated to a lot of pitch shifting and effects. The vocals on this thing are also laid out with tons of reverb and echoes, various manipulations to make them sound distant and ghostly and disembodied, but still really beautiful and haunting. How Burial treats voice on this album is easily the most stunning thing about it, and this formula for most of the tracks on this record pretty much leaves the groove on the shoulders of the beat and the beat alone. And those beats tend to run pretty busy on this record, and they're always subtly shifting too. They have a really strong strong sense of rhythm and direction to counteract the usually washed out layers of subterranean bass and vocals and synths that sit on top. Essentially what Burial is presenting on this album is like the most abstract take on a variety of different electronic and dance music styles that were prevalent at the time. Whether it be some dubstep or two-step or R&B or UK house and garage. So not only are all of these ideas coming together, but they're also being filtered through this IDM and ambient techno lens. You could actually argue a lot of what Burial is doing on this LP does kind of mirror what Richard D. James was doing back in the 90s, grabbing a variety of formulas and ideas from typically aggressive and in-your-face forms of electronic dance music, and then softening them and stretching them out and giving them tons of space and mood and atmosphere so they're more fitting for like a headphone listen. The ideas that William presented on this record were so left field for the UK garage scene that they were worthy of their own genre title, Future Garage. And this combination of ideas and sounds is essentially what Burial would work to perfect over a few EPs, a debut album, really until he ended up releasing Untrue in 2007. Several more lengthy EPs where he would continue to experiment and evolve with this sound would drop after this record, but if you're interested in my thoughts on those, I, I have done reviews on them. But Untrue is the record this review is about, in my opinion, a defining moment for electronic music across the board, specifically in the UK, an artistic aha moment, a moment where a great fresh idea makes a huge splash among fans and critics and even a sea of labels and artists who would drop brigade after brigade of 
Future Garage records for like the next five to six years. This record really was a phenomenon that wowed fans across the music spectrum with its evocative atmospheres, with its hypnotic rhythms. The album generally sounds like blissfully raving into the night on an endless loop with tears in your eyes. The track listing features 13 songs and interludes. It is 50 minutes of material. And Burial essentially whips up a perfect mix of variations on the simple but effective themes that I was talking about him working with earlier. The flow of this record is parsed out really well with an intro, some more ambient interludes to kind of give you a, a very relaxing breather. But even though some great highlights could be separated out from this album, for the most part, a lot of the tracks just kind of seamlessly bleed into one another into this gorgeous, orgasmic experience that you just don't really want to end, and I suppose it doesn't have to as long as you keep repeating it. And even though Untrue does have some washy and blissful and ambient qualities to it, there are some bold and interesting sounds to be heard on this record that are worth paying attention to. This is far from a wallpaper record. If you wanted to, you could eat up every crackly and tingly and industrial sound haunting the mix on the song Ghost Hardware or even the title track. There's also the very quiet and subtly whooping bass notes on the song Etched Headplate, which match really well with the vaguely glitchy manipulations that Burial makes on some of the vocals vocal samples on this cut. If you want to, you could get lost in the endless and infinite echoes laid onto the vocal samples on Near Dark, which also features some oddly appropriate <laughs> sounds of a, a, what sounds like bullet shell casings hitting the ground. I also love the thumping drums on Raver, which is probably the most danceable song on the entire record. Also features some kind of awkward and plucky thumb piano notes in the second half that are an odd addition, but still bring some flavor. And for as soft as it is, the slowly shifting droney synth notes, as well as the vocal samples that ring out like whale calls on the song in endorphin or on the edge of your seat gorgeous. Meanwhile, some of the other interludes on this thing vibe kind of like a darkened version of New Age music or something, like if New Age music were goth. I could go over every single little sonic detail laid into this record, and believe me, there are a lot, but describing every single bit of that is not as important as the viscerally beautiful experience that all of these songs coming together creates. The mental weightlessness that this album can deliver deliver to the listener when listening to it in kind of closed quarters or in just like a very isolated setting. As the tracks on this album not only sound like clouds, pillowy clouds, but also concrete. It's like I'm experiencing the eternal bliss and numbness of an afterlife, but it's also kind of struck down by eternal gray skies. The key to this album's widespread popularity is the ideas and the beauty of this record are so great and universal. Really to the point where knowledge of the ideas and genres that Burial is working with on this record, it's not entirely necessary to just enjoy what's going on here. I may even argue that explaining what makes this record so great isn't entirely necessary either, as you should really just go listen to it. Transition, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? I hope you freaking love it. Uh, what would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Burial, Untrue, Forever.